Here we have another MacBook. Let's take apart this MacBook. Everybody here, by the way, say hi to new guy. He's lasted two days without getting fired. This is like a record. This is What's new, up? new guy. He actually fixed a few boards. Some missing PM Sleep S4Ls on the first day. That impressive. What is the destination physical address in the IP ARP ref request packet for device 192.168.44.64? Someone's trying to get me to do their homework for them. <laughs> no, I'm not doing your homework for you. This MacBook is drawing 0.1 amps, but it's not turning on. Let's see why it's drawing 0.1 amps without turning on. First thing we have to do is take the board out of this MacBook. Now, typically, a machine that's drawing 0.1 to 0.15 amps is one of two things. Behind door number one, or short to ground on PP Bush G3 Ha. Behind door number two, Every rail is coming on besides CPU vCore because of a lack of all sys power good. In order for the machine to provide CPU vCore, all sys power good must be present. So let's see which of the two options it is here. First thing we're going to do is get our multimeter on the screen and measure for a short to ground on PP bus G3 hot. And as can be seen, there's no short to ground on PP bus G3 hot. That's 400 kilo ohms about and just Next thing we're going to do is check out the rest of the board. We're going to hunt corrosion. So let's look under the, this board under the microscope and see what it looks like. Around the all says power good area. Now this is a board that the customer claims was never damaged by liquid. And my assistant is laughing <laughs> because he's... <laughs> do customers lie in your industry as well? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look. No liquid damage. That's a whole lot of no liquid damage right there. All right. And I'm going to take a wild guess that that is around the Allsys Power Good circuit. So this is going to create, allow Allsys Power Good to be created if you have this, PP5VSO, PP3V3SO, PP1V5SO. And then you're also going to need this pull-up resistor over here, which if PM Sleep S3L is present, which is required to get out of an S3 state and up into an SO state, it's going to, if you have P1V8 S3 P good, P5V S4 R3 P good, P1V05 SO power good, DDR power good, then you'll get all sys power good. And we have R8151 and R8152 corroded. So, let's take a look at this MacBook that Apple needed $750 to fix with no options for data retrieval because it's Apple. Why would they unscrew the, this SSD and plug it into the new one when they could just not do that? Why would they copy the data off of it while they're charging you $750 when they can just not do it and get your money anyway? Why bother? So, here we go. We are just going to refurbish those resistors. It's a little bit of refurbishing. All right, it appears those resistors are a little beyond refurbishing, so we're just going to get rid of those two resistors. I was trying to save 17 cents. Can you blame me? Decided to get my speakers in my apartment fixed. Decided to get myself a couch, a headboard for the bed, you know, some nice stuff to commemorate being 30. So, you know, we are, we are trying to... S cut down on, on spending. Resistors are expensive, you know. This shit adds up after a while. So let's just get rid of that other resistor. Come on, resistor. Bye-bye. Gonna have to do a little bit of fixing on those pads over there. Now, is there a pad under there, or is that is that dirt, or is that a genuinely destroyed pad? Right over here. Let's see if we can bring that back. Ah, uh, here we go. So the thing is, we want to scrape hard enough to get rid of the corrosion, 
but not so hard that we remove the pad. Adding new solder and new flux as we go. Scraping gently with a strong metal iron. And keep have the heat up high. It's going to remove all that dirt. Okay. Now we're just going to clear away some of that flux so that we can see things a little better. And the pad that's been fixed could still use a little bit of work. Doesn't look like we used enough flux the first time. That's what happens when you listen to Paul. Never listen to Paul. You're going to put a proper amount of flux there. Not the bigger the blob, the better the job. Now see how when we put the proper amount of flux there, how much better it looks? See how I just got, see how that pad, the solder is just fitting onto it beautifully? That's because when you use a bigger glob, you do a better job. But Paul doesn't want you to know that because Paul wants to save all the money for himself. But that's not what I want. See, unlike Paul, unlike Paul who's not here so we can totally shit can him and uh, talk bad about him until tomorrow, of course, I care about you all and I want to see you do well. Which is why I want you to use as much Amtec NC559 V2 TF Flux that's available at store.rossmangroup.com that makes me more money the more you use as necessary to get proper pads. The bigger the glob, the better the job. The bigger the glob, the better the job. The bigger the glob, the better the job. The bigger the glob, By the way, have any of you met somebody who has their computer's, uh, their profile picture look like this? Like instead of having the profile picture on their computer be their entire face, anybody that does this thing where it like crops out the sides of their face and it crops out their hair so it looks weird? What do you think of people who do things like this? You probably think that they're weird, right? They're kind of being a, like a shitposting troll for a living almost. Why would somebody do this? I'm just curious. Any of you have an answer to that? Never understood the obsession with the half-face thing. All right, so now we've got those beautiful, beautiful pads that have been restored through the magic of Amtec Flux. That's available at store.rossmangroup.com. Remember, we're not telling you to use more Flux just because we want to make more money from you using more Flux. It's totally selfless. This is the proper amount of flux that you're going to use if you want the job to be done properly. This is what we do here at store.rossmangroup.com Oh yeah. I was looking at the store and many of the products have a picture of your cat. Yes, it got hacked and went in and it fucked up a lot of my pictures. I am going to have to have somebody go through that at some point. I just need time. Love your channel. Thanks for the thousand, dozens of hours of entertainment. I had a question. What do you recommend for Android smartphones? Currently using an LG G4. I love it, but it's looking rough. A Motorola, really. I think Motorola has some pretty good offerings. Especially with the fact that they're actually... They're moving in the direction of supporting the repair community, which I approve of. Yeah. 
Yep, it's 2012, just checked, not a 15-inch derp. Oh, all right, then I unfortunately have no, pro no idea what the issue with yours is. I was hoping yours was a U8900 issue that I could help walk you through, but no. All right. Now that we have soldered that on with the mentality of the bigger the jo gob, the better the job, we're going to see if it works. And if it works, then we'll have, Paul, we'll have proven Paul wrong once and for all. That indeed, the bigger the gob, the faster the fan spin. Let's see if this works now that we've fixed it. Using enough flux. And it appears that it now has a fan spin. And the reason it has a fan spin is that we use the right amount of flux. Let's take a quick look at the schematic just so I can go over this very common issue. All sys power good on many of the old machines was required in order for you to get CPU vCore. If you don't have all sys power good, you will get every rail besides CPU vCore. Unless one of these rails is missing, of course. But a lot of the times when all sys power good is missing, it's not because one of these specific rails is missing, like PP5. Like these are all the rails that you need in order for uh, all sys power good to be present. You know, P1V8S3, P5VS4, PP1VO5SO, DDR reg, etc. A lot of the times it's missing because the all sys power circuit itself has been damaged. So if you are working on an air or one of the older retinas, and it's taking 100 to 180 milliamps, but not turning on, a lot of the times that's either A, a short to ground the PP bus G3 hot, or B, a missing all sys power good. And our all sys power good was missing because these two resistors over here, along with the pads under them, were corroded, which meant that this was not getting everything that it needed. And this transistor was probably not allowing all sys power good to be created, and that would be that. Now, you also do keep in mind that this stuff, see where it says ISL version used for development? This is where the circuit gets a little confusing, especially on the airs. This entire setup is not actually here. So this exists. This pull-up resistor for that takes PM Sleep S3L, which is required to be in an SO state, and pulls up all says power good. That's present. These resistors that sit between these power good signals coming from all the chips that create those rails and all says power good, that's present. This transistor over here, along with these voltage dividers that send voltage to the transistor, this is present. This stuff over here is not present. So if you're taking 0.15 amps or 0.1 amps on a MacBook Air or any of the A1502 retinas, and you don't have a short to ground on PPBus G3 hot, 99% of the times it's going to be a missing all sys power good due to either A, a missing rail, or B, some sort of corrosion or malfunction around the all sys power good circuit. Now, if you look at the screen, what I do when I'm missing all sys power good, the first thing I'll do is I'll go through each individual rail that is needed. So for example, here, what rails do I need for all sys power good? Well, I need PP5ESO, PP3V3ESO, PP1V5SO, PP1V8S3, PP5ES4, PP1VO5, DDR reg. Then if all of those rails are present and I still don't have all sys power good, either A, the pull-up resistor that pulls it up is missing. B, something is corroded or broken in this area. So, for example, a bad Q8150, if this was corroded and destroyed, it will keep all this power grid from going high. Or C, these rails are present, but the voltage dividers between those rails and the transistor for all this power grid could be bad. So that is that. And also, this is why it's really important to not be using a standard MagSafe adapter, but rather some sort of power supply. So my power supply here that I attach a MagSafe to, and I'm going to include a link in the description below to a video on how to do this, it tells me, when I set it to 18.5 volts, it tells me exactly how many amps are being taken. And by knowing how many amps are being taken, it lets me know exactly where to look on the board. Now granted, on this one, it was an easy one. There were two corroded resistors, and at this point in time, I could probably have this board two yards away and see those two corroded resistors there. But if those resistors weren't corroded, I would have to spend hours of time going through every single part of the board to figure it out, and that is not a great use of my time. But if you actually store this stuff in a spreadsheet somewhere or just save it in your brain, and then you'll know exactly what part of the board to look for when you see 
how many amps it's taking. Jessa Jones also uses this when troubleshooting iPhones. She goes one step further with it. Not only does she look at how much power the device is drawing from a USB charger, she'll also look at the, uh, the graph. So right, like, let's say it's drawing 0.2 amps, and then 0.1, then 0.2, then 0.1, then 0.2, 0.1, 1, and she spends three days to figure out that it's this specific issue. She'll actually graph that and then save it. And if she sees that pattern, then she'll know, okay, I'm going to look for this problem. It's a great way of speeding up the process of going through these boards, and uh, hopefully that worked for you. And uh, so we got a fan spin. We're going to make some money. And uh, yeah, hope you learned something.